Danny Gasparini, and welcome to this segment of Penn Voice. I'm joined today by Emma Hunter, who is the um, Health Emergency Preparedness Analyst with San Mateo County Health. That's a, that's a big bite, um, Emma, but welcome to the show. Yes, thank you for having me. Um, so a Health Emergency Preparedness Analyst. It sounds like a really important role um, that you're playing within our county and something that we all need to be paying attention to. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Yes. So. As part of the health emergency preparedness team, we're working to prepare county health and all of the medical health resources within our county for any type of disaster that might occur in San Mateo. And so that includes writing plans, working with our hospitals to make sure that they can be prepared for anything that comes their way, and doing some education to the public to make sure that individuals are prepared you know, at the household level. And give us an example of what you're preparing for. It could be an earthquake, a fire, flood, you know, we even look at a pandemic influenza on how that might affect our healthcare system. And that means looking at our infrastructure. So our hospitals, our clinics, how are people going to get services? Exactly. Um, and and does, this, does technology play into this or are you trying to map out everything from a human standpoint? You know, we use a mix of uh, epidemiologic data, which is more science-based, as well as some you know, higher level population-based data to really look at, at the numbers and see what, how many people would be affected based off of these certain scenarios and how that would impact our healthcare system, what, you know, how many patients can our hospitals support. And so you know, we work with them. We have a, a monthly standing meeting with all of our healthcare facilities to sort of work out these problems. So that's the service provider side. Mm -hmm. so Obviously, if there is a pandemic, an earthquake, um, flooding, what can we do as individuals to prepare ourselves um, in case we can't get to some of those health services? So personal preparedness is key, and we encourage everyone to develop a household preparedness plan. Uh, whether you're a household of one or a household of 20, it's really important to get prepared. Uh, something you can do that's Pretty easy is to assemble a household preparedness kit. And so this might include stockpiling some additional water, some non-perishable foods, uh, having copies of your uh, prescriptions or the medications that you take on hand. Uh, also maintaining some copies of important documents if for some reason you are ever asked to leave your home so that you had all of that information with you. Something else that's really key is developing a communications plan. So how figuring out now before there's something, uh, how are you going to communicate with your loved ones, with your friends and your neighbors uh, that you are OK? Um, and something that we recommend is having an out of area a phone number that you can call. So maybe you have a friend or relative that lives outside of the Bay Area, and you know that's a good person to have as a point of contact so everyone can call that outside number uh, just in case things are totally uh, gone here. So, and do you provide sort of a checklist? So um, more than kind of your um, naming off the various things that we can do to personally prepare. Mm -hmm. Is there some place that I can go that kind of says this is your own personal health emergency preparedness checklist? Yes, so a really great place for resources to go is uh, the FEMA website, which is ready.gov, and they have a really robust checklist of all the possible things that could be in your emergency kit, as well as some additional resources on how to prepare yourself and your family. You know, I, th I think as um, we've all talked about earthquakes here in California, we all talk talked about, you know, the canned foods, the waters, the blankets, all those kinds of things. But I think with the recent fires, we've all learned more than just that infrastructure kit about, like you said, your prescriptions and all your key documents. Um, but there's also the pet side of um, preparing um, and knowing what you're going to do in the case of emergency with your pets. So tell us what you've been sort of talking about and learning and preparing for with regard to pet. Yeah, so pets are part of our households, you know, they're part of our families, and so, you know, you need to prepare for your pets as well. And so for a pet, you can establish a similar emergency kit with extra food, water, medications for your pet, uh, you know, also additional pet supplies, whether that's, you know, leashes, collars. They actually recommend taking a photo of your pet, uh, a recent photo, having that on hand. Um, and then something that's really important, especially when it comes to pets, is to practice uh, evacuating your home. Mm -hmm. And so that can be just if you need 
you just want to make your animal familiar with what it might like to be in a, be in a carrier, uh, you know, what it's like to ride in the car, so that if in the worst case scenario you are ever asked to leave your home, you know, you can do so easily with your animal and they've done it before. Right, and I know a lot of animals today, pets today, are chipped. Mm -hmm. So that's an important thing also yes. to know is what your chip, your animal's chip number exactly. is. Exactly. Yes. Any important documents related to your pet, uh, the chip number. You know, if your pet has health problems you want right. documented, all of that just assembled in an, an easy location. And for a lot of people, that's just a really big Ziploc bag. You know, it's not. It doesn't have right. to be anything fancy. Right. So. Um, the county also has a series of emergency alert mm -hmm. systems. We always get the one that comes over the TV, but a lot of times emergencies can happen in the middle of the night. We don't even know they're happening. So what are some of those systems that we need to be prepared for? So the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office of Emergency Services maintains SMC Alert, which is the primary alert system for San Mateo County. And so we at County Health encourage everyone to sign up for this system because in a case of emergency, this is likely where you will find out what's going on and get important information. And so when you sign up, you can enter with your email, your cell phone number, your landline. And so ha having all of these mechanisms to be able to be reached is really important. Right. I know f traditionally we hear the emergency alerts come over the TV, you know, flooding. or But if it is in the middle of the night and our TV isn't on, it's great. To most of us have our cell phones bedside or a landline that we can see and hear these alerts. Um, I liked what you also were alluding to, and that is being aware of the emergency that happens that no one is expecting is one thing, but there right. are also warnings, high wind warnings, it's high fire warnings. We need to be paying attention to these kinds of um, warnings and understanding if in fact this does happen, what is my plan? Exactly. And when you hear those warnings, you know, on the news, watching the weather, it's really important and part of preparedness to make sure that your cell phone is charging that night. Uh, make sure that maybe you have the ringer turned on if you're hearing on the news that something might happen. And that way, if you are to receive one of these alerts, you'll you'll actually hear it because sometimes when you're, a text happens in the middle of the night, you don't always know. Right. And, and I think these reminders are always great. Um, because every time we talk about this, I think there's one thing that someone picks up and says, gosh, I didn't think about that. And I know that's one of your goals is to ensure that everyone sort of has this checklist, that everyone's sort of thinking about what might be what might be happening. And just give us really quickly, where can people go for more information to make sure that I've got my checklist, that I've mm -hmm. got the things prepared, and that I also know what's happening from an infrastructure standpoint at the county level? That's great. So I think we're going to put a couple links up on the screen. And so the first one is to sign up to receive SMC alerts. Those are going to be critical in letting you know, you know what's going on in the county. And we also recommend going to uh, ready.gov, which is the FEMA website, and that has lots and lots of resources on how to build a kit, what should be in your emergency kit, and even you know extra information on what you can do to help out with your pets. And I really think it's important, as, as you had mentioned prior to our show starting, and that is if everyone is prepared and does our part to ensure that we're, um, we're prepared, then there's less uh, resources needed from the infrastructure standpoint at that critical moment when the emergency first strikes. Exactly, yeah, the more prepared we are as individuals, the more prepared we are as San Mateo County, and ultimately when it comes to getting ready for you know, disasters, that's what we're looking for. Well, Emma, thank you so much for bringing us such great and important tips, um, and thanks for the work that you do with San Mateo County Health. Thank you, thank you for having me. And we'll see all of you next time on Penn Voice.